Donald Trump has ordered Speaker Johnson essentially to block uh, any border bill so that he could cause, of course, more chaos, in my opinion, uh, along the border. I just want to comment, because he's not here to defend himself. I know Mike Johnson. I know Mike Johnson since he came in the legislature before Donald Trump was president. I'm sure Mike Johnson doesn't have to wait for Donald Trump's orders to say that that bipartisan bill is inadequate. I mean, that's just a, a slander against him when he's not here. I'm sure he, he's not doing that because Donald Trump ordered him to. I mean, I think, I think he said so on Fox News that he was doing that, actually. That's exactly what he said. And he actually has been taking the exact direction of Donald Trump and has said so uh, publicly in their conversations. But I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to our witnesses for their testimony. Mr. Hauser, thank you for your service to our country. I'm just wondering, Mr. Hauser, is it possible for the Biden administration to improve conditions at the border if congressional Republicans continue to block the extra resources that the president has actually requested? Thank you, Ranking Member, for the, the question. Um, not providing the proper resources uh, that are needed to, to handle the volume that we are seeing at the southern border um, is going to is, uh, drastically decrease this Border Patrol's ability, along with ICE and, the, and the, the, the agencies across the federal government that support sort of the immigration continuum and the immigration process. Now, we also, um, we, we've talked about some of, uh, of, of the former president's strategy of actually dealing with the border whether it's been some of these crazy ideas we discussed earlier. Uh, as a reminder to everyone, the right to seek asylum is, we know, enshrined in law. And Mr. Hauser, does the Trump strategy of um, violence and deterrence work to stop migration? Sir, over my, my time at the department, the idea that just sort of detention and deterrence and punitive measures would sort of deter migrants from, from seeking asylum in this country is, is, is farcical. Now, without action to address push factors and legal pathways, um, there's also uh, we, there's no possibility of an orderly and secure border. I, I want to also put up another quote that was um, recent that um, the former president said, which I think is, uh, is telling. It says, um, it, is, it is only common sense that when I'm reelected, we will begin, and we have no choice, the largest deportation operation in American history. Now, Stephen Miller has said in an interview that he would target 10 million people and would, and I quote, go around the country arresting illegal immigrants in large-scale raids, unquote. This would involve, again, quote, large-scale staging grounds near the border, most likely in Texas, unquote, to serve as camps for migrants designated for deportation. Now, he outlined how this could, could mean sending National Guard troops from Republican-controlled states in what he called, quote, unfriendly states to conduct mass arrests. Mr. Hauser, can you explain to the American people what exactly this kind of proposal would look like and what that would actually mean? Yes, sir. In my personal expert, or my opinion, um, at, at the sort of expulsion rates or removal rates that they're looking for, sort of the logistical transportation security apparatus, along with sort of the at-large arrests, would be dramatically taxing not only on ICE and CBP, where they're not resourced to sort of meet those levels. Additionally, pulling from other law enforcement agencies across the federal government, ATF, DEA, FBI, the, the burden that it would place on the national security community would be extreme. Uh, in that, you would also have to look at the fact that what would our law enforcement community not be focused on? Human smuggling, human trafficking, criminals, violent criminals, et cetera. I must also say that the, those sort of de deportations and removals, as my colleagues on this panel have stated earlier, would be controlled by the receiving country receiving those mass returns and removals. And, and as we, yeah. no, please continue just briefly. And that, and that has been one of the controlling factors of, of ICE continuing to do its job. Yes. And this, this, this plan is not one by Miller, the one you're discussing as well, would also target long-term residents who have actually not committed crimes, correct? I have no sort of knowledge of sort of that plan, sir, but what I say at that scale, targeting long long-term sort of individuals that have been in this country, if uh, there's no disagreement that the, the, the numbers of encounters at the border are exacerbating our ICE and CBP officers. And if this operation, would, would it even be legal? I, I can't speak to that. Okay. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I per, don't, don't, don't believe so. But, but uh, this, this is the kind of, I think, general chaos that um, is being discussed oftentimes uh, on, on, in the majority that is, has no real solutions along the border. It does nothing to make us more safe or more secure. 
Um, but we know that there actually are solutions we could focus on in a bipartisan way, but there does not seem to be any interest on that uh, from the majority. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.